For members of this course, I've managed to get a free copy of CSE HTML Validator standard version. It's, it's version 12, so it's an older version, but it's still very, very useful for checking syntax. And it's the same version that was sold for $69. So it is free. And look in the resources section for the download and registration details for that. I want to quickly show you what this can do. It's called HTML Validator, but it does more than that. It actually validates CSS as well, and it can help you write better CSS code. Now, the first thing you can do is you could load an HTML page or a CSS page from the web just by entering the URL. I've got this set up at the moment to pull back one of my sites, which I recently converted from HTML to WordPress. The reason I converted it from HTML to WordPress was simply because I wanted it to be mobile responsive with the new Google algorithm changes due in April 2015. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to just actually load up the HTML version of that website by clicking on the open button here. And I've navigated to the correct folder. Let me just come down and we'll load the index page. And you see here we've got the index page now loaded up. Now the validate button up here will allow you to validate the HTML, but this button Rather than using the menu item at the top, this button here actually gives you more options here. You can do a full validation, you can validate and find only the errors, or you can do errors and warnings. And you can also do something that's very useful, the accessibility messages only. However, when you start the program, by default, the accessibility options are disabled. So if you go to options and then go down to validator engine options and across to options, we can turn on accessibility here, enable accessibility checking. And then we can just click on OK to save that. Now, first thing I'd recommend you do is probably just use the errors only and see what comes up because this will tell you the errors that are in your, in this case, HTML page. But if you've got a CSS open, it will tell you the errors in the CSS code. And we can see here that we've got an error in the character encoding, which is brought up. We can also see here that there's an error in this tag, this BR tag. It's using capital BRs and there's more information over in the message window over on this side. At any point when you're in the editor and you've you're, you're clicked into an HTML element you can press F1 and it will bring up specific help here we go for the element that is highlighted in this case it's the BR element You've also got the BR, the, the button up here, the F1 BR button. So when you click into something, here I've just clicked into an image tag. I can click on that or press F1 to get more information about the image tag. Okay, we've got then the three errors. Um, we've got a language one, we've got the encoding, and we've got this BR one. There's not an awful lot here to worry about. But obviously, if it was important, I would fix that. Over on the group tab, we've got this keyword density, which you can have a look and see whether there's any keywords that have been used too many times, which is sometimes a problem with over-optimization. And the accessibility, we didn't actually run that. We run the errors only. So let's go and run the accessibility messages. And you can see here we're now on the accessibility tab with a lot more um, things highlighted up here and a lot more items down below to tell us what we need to do. So we've got some warning there about scripts, but let's just have a little look down here. So for example, we've got this one. It says, ensure that the page title is descriptive. In fact, my page title is three words, Vincent van Gogh, and not very descriptive. So it actually helps you as well. But in terms of accessibility, this one, it says we've specified a foreground color and we should also specify a background color so that we can be sure of the contrast because of the different formats of different mobile devices and also laptops as well and, and the different types of screens that things may be seen on. And we have another suggestion here because my image tag is showing some presentational attributes and the suggestion is that we move those presentational attributes across to CSS. And here we've got another one, image may require a long description attribute, but you can see we've just got a few items there. What we're more concerned with with this course, anyway, if you want to have a look at the HTML stuff, that's fine, but what we're more concerned with with this course is CSS. So let me just open the CSS that I used on that particular website. And you can see here that it says you must validate the document F6 or click here to see the messages. So let's just F6 to validate the CSS document. Or of course you could use these buttons here. And this one is showing the full validation. 
and it says here we're terminating due to too many errors. So let's click onto the errors tab and we can start having a look through some of these things. And the first real item here is that we have specified a font as 10 point at PT and we shouldn't be using absolute units of measurement because we need sizes, font sizes to be proportional to the web browser that's being viewed in. In smaller devices we're going to actually want bigger fonts so that they can be read properly. And this was one of the problems with this particular site was on mobile devices the fonts were way too small and things just couldn't be read properly. We've got here another error. Uh, in this CSS we've got, look, paragraphs class and that's not a known element in CSS. And here's another one. We've got an error in the padding over here. Zero pixels, zero pixels, five, and then we've got a couple of spaces, pixels, zero pixels. Well, that, that's invalid as well. We need to have the, uh, the no spaces in between the numbers and the units there. Let's have a look what else we've got. Okay, and as you can see, when we select something new in the list, it actually highlights in the code above. This one here, I'm not sure what it is. It says the value of voice family property is invalid. Well, voice family is there. I'm not actually sure what that means, but there's an error in it. And you can see down here what the description of that error is and how to fix it. And as we move down these errors, we've got another one here where padding is minus two pixels. And according to CSE validator, we should not be using a negative value for padding property. So that's the errors tab for this particular CSS. We've also got a warnings tab here and you can see this we've got um, we've seen this one already when a foreground is defined we should define a background. Specifically this is an accessibility feature really because if you don't have enough contrast then it may not be visible on um, some monitors. And here this is a warning as well that in this particular CSS declaration here we've got text decoration and if you look over at the message window here it says the text decoration property was used inside a declaration block of CSS rule set that contains a selector using the visited pseudo class. For privacy reasons browsers limit the properties that can be used on elements selected by visited. For example the text decoration property may have no effect. So this isn't a serious issue it is just a warning which is why it's found in the warning section as is the very first one. Many mobile devices use touch screens. That means that this hover may not do anything on a touch screen because how do you hover your finger over something without touching the screen and therefore making it into a click. So you can see lots and lots of great information here that can help you create much much better style sheets. And I just want to show you as well if you're going to create a new one, I'm going to have to drag this in a little bit. You can't actually see it. Well, actually, I can use the file menu instead. File, new from template, CSS, and then it will create a, create a blank CSS file for you. What you can have, and what I've got up here, is I've got these buttons to help me. So let's say I wanted to do the background color of the body. What I can do, and you can enable and disable some of these. So for example, I want to get rid of the HTML insert as they're called. I can just uncheck it and now I'm left with just the CSS ones. So let's put in the background color and then click on B and then background down to background color and it inserts the code for me so that it makes it far easier to create error free code. And of course when you finish now you can do full check to see if there's any errors or warnings. And in this case Warning, as we've seen before, when a background color is defined, a foreground color should also be defined by using the color property to help avoid contrast problems. And so that's what we've got there. We've defined a background color. We want to define a foreground color using color. Let's do it like that. And then we'll just validate again. And we get an all clear to say that the CSS is error free. This is only a very short introduction to using the tool, but I hope you found it interesting and as I said, you can get this tool, the, the version 12 standard version, for free as a member of this course. And I'd like to thank Albert, who's the developer of HTML Validator, for opening up this offer to my students. 